20 year old Nat Jonksala got almost a million views with this Instagram reel. The most dangerous people in society are lazy, ambitious people. He created it using a 3D camera in Adobe After Effects. Can we recreate it in CapCut? We can get pretty freaking close. If you want more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and whack the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Let's start by jumping into CapCut, hitting this button in the top right, selecting Settings, select Edit, and we're going to choose the image duration. We're going to make something that's about six seconds long, so we might as well just make the image duration match that when we import it so we don't have to change anything. And just type six, click save, bam, now any images we import will automatically be six seconds long. Let's create a new project and go ahead and import our footage. Before we can recreate Nat's edit, we need the actual elements. I used text prompts to create all of these characters, which look like this. You may have noticed that Nat's characters all have gradients and glow. So I jumped into Photoshop and I created all of these images with gradient and glow like these. You can do something similar in either Photopia or Canva, both of which have free options. However, I'm giving you all of the elements we use in this tutorial for free, linked in the description below. I'm giving you the green screen elements in case you want to mess with those, plus these gradient elements so you're ready to rock and you just kind of follow along this tutorial along with some voiceover. There's also a link in the description for 100 free sound effects in case you don't have those free sound effects yet. So go ahead and hit both those links right now in the description below, download those, and follow along with me right now. Next, I want to make sure you're using the same frame rate as me because it will matter if you're following along. Over here in this top right details panel, click on modify, and down here under frame rate, make sure it says 24 FPS, 24 frames per second, and then just hit save. Now we're gonna stack all of these elements in the timeline with the last one to appear at the bottom, going up to the first one to appear at the top. So it's the devil girl at the bottom here. And next we've got the man with a suitcase. Then we have man one, then we have man walking, then we have woman walking. And you'll notice that all of them are exactly six seconds long because we changed that setting before we imported them into CapCut. We wanna work with these items one at a time, starting with this top one. So I'm gonna highlight all these bottom guys. To make the most use of our screen, I'm gonna start by hitting Shift Z on my keyboard. Bam, and then it extends everything in the timeline so it fills it up. We wanna work with these elements one at a time, so we're gonna mute all of these four by highlighting all of them and typing the letter V on the keyboard. Bam, they're hidden. Now all we see is this first one, this woman walking. The illusion that Nat creates in his video is that we are flying through these characters. And that's pretty easy to do in Adobe After Effects using a 3D camera. We have to kind of fake it with scale and position and have to animate these all one at a time. This is how we do it. With this woman walking, we're gonna go forward about three frames by hitting the right arrow three times. One, two, three. We're gonna set a keyframe for scale and position. And remember, a keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. The properties we're gonna change are scale and position. This is our starting position. We want her to start somewhere over here. We wanna be able to see all of her to start. And then we're gonna have her kind of fly off the screen that way and get bigger like we're walking past her. So here's our first keyframe. They're gonna move the playhead over to about 114 or so. We can see the time code right here. And now we're going to scale her up and reposition her so it looks like we're walking past her. We wanna get pretty big, something like that maybe. And we can get a feel if that kind of works like this. So it looks like we're walking past her, kind of. And we want her to get all the way off screen. So I put her here first so we get the scale exactly right. Then I'm just gonna move her down off screen completely, even past the glow. And let's check that again. Looks like we're walking past her. Now that looks okay, but it's a little bit linear. We want to add curves so it doesn't look so linear. It looks a little bit more natural. You have more keyframe control in After Effects and Premiere, but it's, it's not bad here in CapCut. We just right click and we choose Show Keyframe Animation and we want to add the curves to each one of these properties. This is the scale property. I'm gonna double click on this, click on the keyframe, scroll up so I can see this, and I'll just add this middle auto curve. The auto curves work best. You have options to add custom curves over here and modify them, but whenever you mess with them, it usually kind of jacks it up, so you're safest in the beginning to just stick with the auto curve right here in the middle. And I'm gonna do that for all of the other properties. This is scale. Because we scaled her, we moved her left to right, and we moved her up and down a little bit, we wanna add curves for all of these. So I'm going to click down here once, double click, and do the same thing for the X curve, and the second keyframe of the X curve, and the same thing for the Y keyframes here. And I'm going to click that last guy, right click, choose hide keyframe animation, click off of it to hide the white outline, and let's see how that looks. 
you know, that looks pretty good, kind of close to what Nat's doing. And then I'm gonna do that for all the rest of them. I'm gonna do one more with you, then you'll do the rest together. So let's go ahead and position the play at the beginning, click on man walking, I'm gonna type the letter V to unhide him. He's right there. He's a little bit smaller when he starts because he's a little farther back. We're creating the illusion that she's closest to us, he's a little farther away. And so something like that maybe. And I'm gonna move the play head forward about three frames. Set a keyframe for scale and position. Then I'm gonna move to 114, right about where she landed. And I'm going to scale him up quite a bit again and move him back and down. And just to get the perspective on the scale, I'm gonna click off of him to get rid of that white line, position the play at the beginning and get a feel for whether or not the scale and positioning is correct. And you'll notice that it looked different, it looked weird. The reason it did is because we haven't added curves to him yet, but I think the scale is probably about right. So let's go ahead and add curves for this guy. Right click, show keyframe animation, double click on the scale, click on each keyframe, and add the curve to each one. I'm gonna do the last four, you don't have to watch. With him keyframe, let's see how that looks. And that's almost right, but I didn't move him all the way off screen. I first put him here to get a sense of the scale and position. Then I go back to this keyframe and position him off screen a little bit and down. So we're moving these guys over, down, and scaling them. And let's see how that looks. That's not bad. I'm gonna do this for one more character for you so you can follow along. But after that, you try to do it for the last two characters and time it how you think looks good. But as you do it, remember you want all of the characters to land before they hit six seconds. Let's go ahead and reveal man one PNG. By the way, in case you don't understand the difference between a JPEG and a PNG, a PNG has what's called an alpha channel, so you can see behind it. Right here it looks black, but you can see through this guy right here. Like if I show this layer down here, you know, I can see her behind him. If this was a JPEG, I would not be able to see her at all because this black would just be black, but this is actually see-through. So if you have the option to save or download a video as a JPEG or a PNG, if you want to see what's around the object you're saving, you need to save it as a PNG, not as a JPEG. With this guy now visible, let's go ahead and scale him down a little bit. And he should be slightly smaller than this other dude here. And he's slightly off to the side so you can see him. So probably about right there is good. We're gonna move forward about frame 10 and start this guy. And I'm going to set a keyframe for him by selecting scale and position here in the top right. Then I'm gonna move forward to about, I don't know, 207-ish. So we land slightly after these guys. We're gonna scale him up you know, pretty substantially and move him down and over to the right. And I, just to get perspective, I wanna see that. Let's go ahead and look at this, and then we'll move him off the screen all the way. And by the way, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go, oh, let me move him over here, and you're gonna to forget to position him on the keyframe. That's gonna to happen to you, I almost guarantee it. And now look what happens. It goes, oh, he stops, and then, oh yeah, he keeps going, and he moves all wonky. You don't wanna do that. You want to get rid of that keyframe. You can either hit undo, because we haven't done anything else, or you can just click on it, turns blue, and hit delete. Go back to this keyframe here, we're positioned on it, and now anything I do will modify just this keyframe, it won't add any more. I'm going to just move him slightly off screen and down a little bit, like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the curves by right-clicking, show keyframe animation, double-click on scale, click, auto-curve, click, auto-curve, and I'm gonna do the rest, you don't have to watch. With these first three guys keyframed, auto-curve's added, let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. With these first three guys done, it's now up to you to animate these last two guys by yourself. You wanna make sure that you start them a little after these guys and end them a little after these guys. So it looks like we're flying through them or walking through them. For those of you who are serious about video and growing on YouTube, whether it's to get more views and subscribers just because it's fun or because you are growing a business, whether you're selling t-shirts or selling houses, I sell houses and I sold a bunch of houses because of video, you really wanna get my course, Master CapCut. I'll teach you everything that CapCut does so you can figure out stuff like this on your own. Everything I share with you is the culmination of 25 years of editing along with creating hundreds of videos both on YouTube and professionally in Hollywood. And in fact, for the last eight years I worked in Hollywood, I created commercials for the biggest Marvel and Disney movies you've ever seen. So if you want a Hollywood editor to teach you use CapCut like a pro, gotta check out my course, 
Master CapCut at mastercapcut.com or click this link right here or go to the description below. By the way, in my course, I also teach you what it takes to get views. If you look at my channel, you'll see it was doing okay for a long time, then I took a break on it, then I learned a whole bunch more stuff on my travel channel and studying, and then I came back to this channel and this channel went it just, it took off. I teach you what I did so you can make your channel take off like mine has. So check out the link in the description below. Now that you've animated all five characters, similar to the way I animated the first three, it should look something like this. I feel like that doesn't look too bad. Next, I'm going to drop in the voiceover. I'm going to jump at the voiceover folder here and just drag it down here. And I've got this dead space right here. So I'm going to just trim this guy up quite a bit. And notice that I've got an empty track here somehow. So I'm going to just drag all these guys down. Bam. Just so we take up as little space as possible. And I'm going to start my voiceover, I don't know, somewhere around here. And I want this second part to start a little bit later. So I'm going to just add a cut here with Command B, adding a cut. And I have the audio for this second part start, I don't know, around here at 312. So this is 312 and the audio is starting there and this one and the beginning is starting at, I don't know, around 10 and it would look something like this. The most dangerous people in society are lazy, ambitious people. Okay, the voiceover sounds great. Now let's go ahead and add in that fire effect he had behind her. To add that fire, we're just going to jump over here into stickers and type in animated fire. And luckily it's got stuff built in. Some of the stuff is animated, some isn't. Nope, that is, that's the one we want. I'm just gonna click on it. And we want to start around, I don't know, 306 or so. It's gonna drag it right here, have it start. But I want it to be behind her. Right now it's in front of her, it's way too small. Let's make it much bigger. And if you run out of room, it's like, oh no, I can't scale it anymore. Yes, you can go over here and type in like, I don't know, 650. That's probably pretty great right there. Maybe even bigger because we want, well, actually let's try, yeah, bam. We want to be able to see it behind her. So I'm going to make it 750 so it's even more obnoxious. And we, to get it behind her, what do you do? You just click and you drag it behind her like this. And sometimes you can't go down to this last layer. In fact, you just can't. You have to put this layer above it. So I'm going to click on the devil girl and put her right above the fire like that. And bam, it's there. And let's make sure it's still at 306. Yeah, it moved a little bit. Let's put it right here. And now it's like... Are lazy ambitious. And that was like abrupt. His fire didn't start abrupt. It faded up. How do we fade it up? Well, you might think you could just position plate at the beginning, make sure it's highlighted and go up here like, wait, there's there's no way to fade it up. There's no opacity here. Stickers, animation, tracking, no opacity. How do we fix that? We right click on it and we choose create compound clip. Now it thinks it's a regular video clip. And you might think, oh no, there's no opacity. That's because it's buried under blend. Just click on this tiny little arrow here. <gasps> opacity, thank goodness. Let's set a keyframe to mark the beginning of this change in property, opacity. It's like, bam, I want it to be zero there. I want it to fade up from zero. I'm going to type shift arrow, which takes me forward 10 frames. Remember, you've got to be at 24 frames a second. So it takes you, you know, almost to the halfway point of a second. If you were at 60 frames a second, it would be one sixth of a second. That's why you got to be at 24 frames to do this with me. Otherwise, the numbers are going to be off. And now here, I want it to go to 100% opacity. So I could set the keyframe first, but I don't need to because I have a keyframe right here. If I change this property, it will automatically add a keyframe. I want you to watch, I'm pointing like you can see my screen. I want you to watch right here and watch what happens when I drag this up to 100 it added another keyframe. So it looks like this. Our lazy bam, we've got the fire. I say bam a lot, I should stop. Bam. Next he had some Z's flying out of her head right here to indicate a lazy person. So to do that, we're going under stickers. I'm gonna click this X to get rid of that. I'm gonna type Z, Z, Z and see if we have any animated Z's. And oh look it, animated Z's. Let's go ahead and drag these under this guy and move it over here and scale it. And I don't know, the Z started a little bit later, so we could just, I don't know, position the playhead there around maybe 312 or so. And the same thing, it's like I wanted the Z's to fade up. How do I have them fade up? Right click, choose create compound clip, select this keyframe for opacity, drag it down to zero, move forward about 10 frames, shift right arrow, and drag it all the way up. Maybe start the uh, Z's a little later are lazy, ambitious people. That's pretty great. I want everything to end at six seconds. So I'm gonna position my plate at six seconds and make the fire end there and make the Z's, the compound clip here, end there. And 
we also we need some music now i found some music that's commercial because it's only six seconds i'm not worried about a copyright claim you're gonna have to download it yourself if you want to use this music but i'm gonna drop it in for you just so you can see in fact i'm gonna go into media and i'm gonna import it and come on baby go under my nat thing do i have it under audio there it is hanson sahara so okay all right here's some inside stuff i download stuff all the time and there's an app i use to download stuff i made a video about that app once and it got me a copyright strike warning so it's one of those apps that you got to be careful about it's linked in the description below it starts with the word snap they have a free version that gets you a few things and then a paid version i use it all the time time. If you're going to download one little app that you pay a few bucks for a year, it's kind of the one. If you're going to be downloading stuff off the internet, whether you're getting, you know, graphics or video or music. I mean, here's a, you know, a popular song I downloaded so I could just borrow the music for a few seconds and I'm not worried about a copyright strike or claim because it's only six seconds. But if you want that app, it's linked in the description below. I'm going to import this and I'm just going to drag it here to the end of the timeline and oh, show you Trevor made a mistake. I wanted at the end of the timeline, why did that snap over? And I leave mistakes in here on purpose. You guys can learn. This this thing just slid under everything where I don't want it because I had the track magnet on this guy. So I'm going to turn that guy off by clicking on it. And now I can drag this over here. And you know, it wouldn't have mattered. I, you know, if it was right there, it would have been fine. But I'm going to right click it and I'm going to choose extract audio. So I get just the audio. Delete this. I don't want this music video thing some guy made. I'm going to drag it over here. Get rid of all of this junk so it lasts six seconds. And you'll notice if I zoom in right here by hitting the command key on a Mac, and the control key on a PC and my scroll wheel, I can zoom in and zoom out. I do this all day long, both in this program and something similar in Final Cut. I'm gonna get rid of this section here where it's silent. I want everything to start like immediately. And that's only like a frame, but I'm gonna put it right there and I'm gonna hit Shift Z so I see the whole timeline. I'm gonna make sure everything lines up perfectly. Next, I'll add some subtitles just like Nat did. You can learn how to do that in my other videos. And once I'm done with that, you should have a video that looks exactly like this. The most dangerous people in society are lazy, ambitious people.